With my sister's wedding coming up, there were a couple projects I wanted to push hard and get done in time on the barn. The first one I wanted to work on was to build some hanging lanterns for the loft area. I started designing by accurately measuring and modeling the sockets and bulbs I bought. I designed a top plate that'll fit snugly over the socket, and then attached to this will be some brackets that hold the tops and bottom of a square cage. It's a pretty simple design, but it took me a while to come up with it. I don't plan on using the loft area as a workspace, so I don't need good work lights up there. These lanterns are going to be more accent lighting. I planned on making a couple dozen of the lanterns, but I thought that before I started mass production on them, I should make one prototype to make sure everything fits together and I'm happy with how they look. And I'm still learning how to run my new CNC plasma cutting table. So I want to make sure I got everything set on it right before I send it to cut a bunch of stuff out. In the design of each part, I put little notches, hoping that everything will just kind of click together when I get it all cleaned up. It took a couple tries, but I finally found a diameter for the inner circle on the top plate. That was a nice tight fit, and I could actually turn the light bulb upside down and it would stay in place. The plasma cut edge has a little bit of a taper to it, so it's kind of trial and error getting a tight fit like that. But now that I knew the size, I knew I could replicate it easily and all the rest. One thing I didn't like about my frame design is that it wastes a lot of metal in the middle. But I think I'll be able to use these blanks again down the road on other projects. So it's not a total waste. While I was cleaning up the parts I just cut out, I started wondering how the heck I was going to hold all this together while I got attacked. And that's when I realized Maybe I could make a jig to hold everything square and hopefully speed up the process too. That's what I'm loving about my CNC table. The more I use it, the more ideas I have of different ways I can use it. Ideas I never would have thought of before. I hauled all the cut parts up to the farm shop and got to work by bending the frame. I left tiny little tabs connecting the sides I thought I'd be able to just bend by hand, but there wasn't enough metal on the other parts, and it kind of wanted to bend into a curve, and so to keep the tight corner, I just had to hammer it down. I assembled the pieces for my jig, and made sure they were square before putting small tacks on them. One side I didn't tack, so I could slide it out and get the newly assembled lantern out. It wasn't easy. It was a bit of a balancing act and took a lot of patience but I think it was definitely easier than trying to do without the jig. And it was nice not worrying about keeping the brackets square and aligned with each other. It was a really satisfying click putting that top piece in. It was a perfect fit and everything held itself in place at that point. Cool. Jig worked. We had some really thin expanded metal left over from a project we did on the farm. And I thought it worked good to fill in the frames. I marked it with a sharpie and then cut it out with the angle grinder. Some small tacks around the outside held these in place. 
I had to cut the enclosed frame in half because I found out I wasn't going to fit around the inner piece. With a cut in half, I could put both sides in place and tack them back together in the same spots where the other tabs are and you couldn't tell the difference. With that, the first lantern was done and it seemed like it was going to work pretty good. So I guess that means it's mass production time. This was a long cut on the table. I think it took about 40 minutes. No hiccups though. I was really impressed. Just plugged away. I spent a lot of time nesting the parts and trying to find the best way to use the least amount of metal. And it kind of left a cool design in the metal afterwards. I have to use that for something else later. I set it aside and loaded up a new sheet of tin gauge to cut out the frames. My grandma and grandpa stopped by to see the table in action. They've been hearing me talk about the table for a while now and told me to give them a call next time I was cutting something so they could come watch. My grandma was excited to wear the cool glasses. I started getting the hang of it the more lanterns I built. Learn little tricks to speed things up, make it easier here and there. There's definitely still a lot of work though. And by the time you're making number 20, patience has grown a little thin. I learned I could use the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel to put thin scoring marks on the back side of the bins, which helped it bend a lot easier. I bend three sides and then set the lantern inside and bend the fourth side closed. It's a lot easier doing it that way. Oof. Glad that's done. I hauled the lanterns back down to my barn and cleaned them up with some acetone to remove any oil and dust from welding. Then I used some Japanese brown patina to rust the metal a little bit and give it a little darker finish. Once I was happy with the patina a couple days later, I took them over to my water faucet to wash the patina off. This neutralizes the chemical reaction and stops the rusting process. After they had fully dried, I gave them a couple coats of matte clear enamel. With the lanterns done, it was time to put on my electrician's hat. It turns out my electrician's hat is the same dirty old farm hat I wear every day. But I guess that's what farming is, it is a job of many hats. But one hat. You know what I mean. I laid out the lantern locations on the left floor to figure out where they should go. And then I use my laser level to shine a light straight up so I can know where to mount the electrical box in the rafters. I hadn't been up in the very peak of my barn yet. And as long as you don't look down, it's not too bad. Once I had all the electrical boxes mounted, I ran some wire to them which took a long time. I should forget how long that takes. I bought a 100 foot spool of black wire since each light was going to be a different length going up to the roof of the barn. I used my laser level again to set the height for all the lanterns. A little bungee cord helped me hold the lantern up high while I installed the socket on the bottom of the wire after I cut it off at the right height. I 
And then that was it. I could lower the lantern down. The lantern over the stairs, I hung lower than all the rest because I think that's how it's usually done. So it's spaced the same to the stairs as you go down them. I had a couple lanterns I didn't end up using and I thought I would list them on my Etsy page if anyone was interested. I also wouldn't mind making more. I really enjoyed making these. I'll put a link to my Etsy page down below if you want to check it out. After getting these last lanterns installed, going up the stairs to the deck, they were done. It's time for the fun part.